Okay, guys, so this is just a normal graph of the week. Um, this week we are talking about caffeine consumption. So that's something I know I deal with, um, but also something that I see you guys drinking or getting in various ways. So um, we're talking about that this week. Also, since I'm not there, you might want to kind of look back at these questions. I know we kind of skipped them, but they're there to help you reflect and make observations on the graph. So analyze the graphs below and write a reflection on what you think the graphs are communicating to you to guide with your response. Start with some observations. So these are really the questions that I'm kind of asking you guys as we go through um, these graphs. And, you know, they're always on your paper. They're a good place to start. These are some general questions you should also ask when you read graphs. So again, there's kind of a lot of things you can look at, um, but I will talk you through. You are looking for 11 observations. So if you notice, there are 11 lines. So I know it sounds like a lot. Okay, you don't need to moan and groan about it because one, I'm going to give you some right now. But two, I'm kind of curious to see what you guys notice on your own. Um, it's not just me that knows how to read graphs, right? Like you guys have been reading graphs for a long time. There might be some different observations that you make that I don't even think about. So I like reading those and seeing kind of what you guys come up with. So let's start with the graph on the left. This is a bar graph, okay? And it is entitled, How Children Consume Caffeine. So it is a little bit blurry. I apologize for that. Uh, but it looks like along the x-axis, we have different types of drinks. So coffee, tea, soft drinks, and energy. Obviously, all of those have uh, caffeine in them. We have different ages, so it looks to me like blue is age 2 to 5, red is age 6 to 12, and then green is age 13 to 17. So there are dif different ages of children. Obviously, that's most of the span. Uh, infants are probably not going to be drinking any type of caffeine, and then I guess after 18, they consider you an adult, so that's why that's left out. Um, on the y-axis, we have percent of consumers. So um, I guess that would be percent of consumers overall. Um, that's my guess. So, you know, this whole group of people drink coffee, okay? How much of that group um, drink coffee that are between the age of 2 and 5 or something like that? Now, as we read left to right... Okay, I'm looking at um, really young kids. They don't seem to drink much coffee. That's kind of, I mean, good, but also really weird that any kid between two and five would drink coffee, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you drink coffee that young. Um, I guess you could have iced coffee or something. It looks like tea is a little bit more common. I think that might be a cultural thing. Um, I actually drink a decent amount of tea, too. So, um, you know, tea might be more common between two and five. Soft drinks, you know, about 50% of... Um, consumers, I think that's saying of all kids two to five, 50% of them drink soft drinks. That seems to make more sense. And then very few kids that are two to five drink energy drinks, like hardly any, which probably would be bad for their development. I don't know. Age six to 12. So um, when students are, or kids are becoming six to 12, anywhere in that age range, um, the amount of coffee, uh, consumption is going up a little bit. It looks like tea consumption actually goes down. Kind of an interesting fact. Soft drink consumption continues to raise and so does energy drinks. And then ages 13 to 17, it looks like they basically all go up. So uh, that's when people or students or kids start drinking more coffee, more tea, more soft drinks, more energy drinks. Um, again, with your observations, feel free to pull in your personal experience. Like, I started drinking coffee probably between 13 and 17. I am um, obsessed with coffee. I drink it every single day. You know, why would somebody need to start drinking coffee at that age? Is it because they have more responsibilities? Is it because they have more things they need to get done, you know? Um, so feel free to bring in sort of your own personal connections to this. Um, were you one of those babies that drank energy drinks? Like, I don't know. Um, that just might be something that happens. If you have a parent that drinks energy drinks a lot, then maybe you tried an energy drink as a kid. Energy drinks really weren't around when I was a kid, um, not at least when I was two to five. So that's sort of a new trend that I think would have happened um, maybe in the last like 10 to 15 years. So the next graph is caffeine content of popular drinks. So instead of seeing uh, people behavior, we're just looking at the different kind of drinks. Um, and then we're looking at milligrams 
and milligrams per ounce. So milligrams, um, the red one, I believe is the amount of caffeine in the coffee or in the drink in general. So like in the Wired X505, I've actually never heard of that. In 24 ounces of that, you are getting 500 milligrams of caffeine. Okay, so it ends up being um, like 10 milligrams per ounce. It's actually like 20 milligrams per ounce. Yeah, that would make more sense. Uh, if you're having a fix that's 20 ounces, you're getting 500 milligrams of coffee. Dang, Starbucks brewed coffee, you're getting 410-ish milligrams of coffee, or milligrams of caffeine. Sorry, this is all caffeine. So you can kind of see some of the different options, like um, Coca-Cola cans at the very bottom. So 12 ounces of Coca-Cola is, you know, only maybe 40 milligrams of coffee. Green tea, or of caffeine. Green tea also has caffeine in it, but it's significantly less than energy drinks. So, like, why the heck do energy drinks work? Well, because they're giving you massive, massive amounts of caffeine. But also just Starbucks coffee, right? Like, Starbucks coffee is up there with no fear. Rockstar, Monster, like, all of these things. Even a tall, which is like a small Starbucks coffee, is giving you a ton of caffeine, even compared to some of the top energy drinks. Um, you know, full throttle, like, all of those things. Um, regular Coca-Cola, Red Bull, Latte, Tea, Brewed or Imported, Mountain Dew. Like, a lot of people think that Mountain Dew just gets you super hyped or gets you really, you know, kind of, like, charged up. Um, but actually, it has significantly less uh, caffeine uh, milligrams per ounce than other things. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, so, this is just kind of, you know, a way that you can look at something different in your life right? We all have experiences with caffeine. Maybe we actively avoid caffeine, but you know, how does it affect children? You guys certainly fall into these age ranges. Um, do you notice that those are similar effects or similar patterns with you guys? And then also just if, if we look at, um, the caffeine content in popular drinks, you know, are, are these things surprising to you? Um, what experience do you have with these different types of drinks? So, again, I need 11 observations. That is one per line. Um, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can take them from this video. You can add your own things. I'd, I'd rather you add your own things. And then you are going to give this to your sub and start working on Moby Max. So when you're done with this, you're not hopping on your computer and playing games or doing something different. You are getting on Moby Max. The sub does have your login information if you need it. Go ahead, do a couple lessons on there. Um, filling in those learning gaps until the end of the hour. And then do your very best on the test. Good luck. See you on Monday.